So for this video, we'll go through how to use the deposit feature on Business Central and to receive payment and apply them. There are multiple ways to do it, um, but the two main ways are using the, uh, the payment journal and receiving cash that way, or we can also do a deposit. And so if we go to the deposit screen, Okay, so this is our deposit screen and we'll see that there is nothing because we uh, don't have any open deposits. So we'll create a new one here. Okay, so if we go um, with the default here, if we click out of there, it'll give us a default numbering sequence. So it'll pick 1004 for us. And then the bank account number, we can select the bank account we want to deposit this into. Choose checking. And for the total deposit amount, uh, I have a figure in my head here for our three checks we're going to deposit today. 1198.4.55. Okay. Uh, we have our posting date here, which is uh, defaulted to our work date as well as the document date. And we have a couple of dimensions we can input as well. So going on to the lines of our deposit, if we wanted to deposit some customer payments, we would choose the customer account type. And then we will select our customer here. We'll use Litware. The description will autofill here. And our document date, um, is usually the check date. And so we could be doing this deposit on 1-1, one, one, but the check was written on 12, 26, 2017. And we would enter that in here to record our uh, check document date. And the document number will usually be the check number. So we'll do chest check zero one. And let's say this check was for 2853.48. Okay. So now that we have our one line here, um, you'll notice that the total deposit lines uh, will equal to what is shown in our lines down here. And since we only have this one for the 2800, it'll show up here and then calculate the difference between that and the total deposit amount. Uh, one thing to note is that you will not be able to post this deposit until uh, this difference is zero. And so once we have um, our line here, one thing we can do is uh, apply this check payment for an open sales invoice. Uh, as it is right now, uh, if we were to post this and the difference is zero, this payment would be an open payment. It would be unapplied to uh, any invoices. And uh, if we had an invoice for this amount, it would be left as an open invoice. So to do that, we could either do it that way and apply it later on, or we can apply it here through the apply entries feature. And what uh, that will do is bring up the um, the customer entries for this client or a customer. And it'll show us the amount we have to apply for our payment. So this one lines up with this invoice over here, this 2853.48. So if we go ahead and click here and hit process, set applies to ID. You'll notice that it'll fill out the supplies to ID with the document number we filled in for that check line. So you'll notice this will say test check 01 as we filled it in. And our balance here will be zero as it is all applied to this invoice. So we go ahead and click OK. That'll be applied. And we can do some more lines here. 
Um, we'll do the same one. Do 1226, 2017 for this one as well. Test. Check. Two. And we'll have this one for 5096, 57. So for demo purposes, we'll just go ahead and uh, make the posting date a little bit later on. And we will say that these checks uh, are being applied to some very old invoices. Let's go ahead and apply this entry now. Nine six applies to ID. So that will be applied for its full balance. Now we still have this 4034.50. Um, if we wanted to select a different customer, we could do that as well. So let's say we have a check from Alpine Ski House. Let's make the document date. I'm here. We'll do test check zero three, and then let's do our four zero three four point five zero. All right. So now that our difference is zero, we can post it. Um, you'll notice that I didn't apply this invoice yet, um, so we can go through that after this is posted. Go ahead and post this. So now that we have um, the deposit done, uh, it'll show uh, nothing as a pending deposit. So now, so now that we've posted the deposit, um, we can go back to the payment where we did not apply it to an invoice. We go to the customers. And the customer is Alpine Ski House. If you scroll down here um, to the payment section, uh, if you go to the last payment receipt date this for the 1 1, which is uh, our deposit, we can click that and it'll filter it for us. So this test check zero three for this four zero three four point five. You'll notice here has a remaining amount balance because it's still open, um, and this is the balance that can still be applied to an invoice. And I will do that is by going to process, apply entries, and it'll pull up all the invoices um, available for us to apply this to. So it looks like this balance is short the remaining amount. I believe it doesn't include the tax. So if we go ahead and partially apply it, set the applies to ID, it'll show the user's ID for the applies to ID. And you'll notice that we still have this balance of 282 um, on this open invoice. So if we go ahead and process post application and we'll have that done there. And now you'll see that this payment here uh, it will be closed and we'll have a zero amount uh, remaining for this payment. And that is how you do a deposit. Um, deposits are useful because um, when you do your bank reconciliation, um, it's easier to have these um, bigger numbers that aggregate um, a lot of smaller payments into one deposit slip because you'll only see that one large number on your bank statement as well as um, the deposit slip that is um, entered into Dynamics BC.